meeting Clem de Rosa, that was an experience. I didn't know Clem. I went to Long Island to teach, and somebody heard that I was on Long Island that knew me and said, you know, can you play a gig? This happened to be on the Dunes area on Long Island, a uh, very exclusive area of, of, of clubs. So I went to play, playing piano of all things. So I went there and playing piano and I meet the guys and who are th who's there but Clem De Rosa playing drums. Yeah, Clem, as you know or you already know, was the drummer for Stan Canton and he was also the drummer for the Glenn Miller band in, when he was in the army. I mean, there's a background of his that is unbelievable. Well, I didn't know him, but he never forgot me. And as I started to teach on the island and I started doing other things, uh, he then found out that I was a saxophone player. And that was quite a few years later. And he got a hold of me and he said, gee, you play saxophone, yeah. Clarinet, yeah. He said, well, you know, I'm doing the Glenn Miller Band and I'm doing the Tommy Dorsey Band, the Jimmy Dorsey Band. He says, I want you to play in the section, in the sax section. I said, gee, I, I don't know the book. He says, be no problem for you. So anyway, that's pretty much how we started to, to understand each other and who we were. And we start doing a lot of stuff educationally in addition to playing in these groups and these bands. So uh, then I retired out of New York, came to Erie, but Clem has stayed in touch with me for 20 years. And there were times we would be on the phone three times a week. And then he was one of the originators of the International Jazz Society in the United States, uh, which started, I believe, in North Texas State. Leon Breeden, who was quite an educator uh, for jazz studies, was one of the first who introduced jazz studies in the universities and colleges at University of Texas. And uh, so Clem and he started the International Jazz Society. That for some reason or other, and other maybe about 10 years ago started to lose money. And I don't know why, but they were having a hard time. In the meantime, that is now defunct. Clem came up with an organization called American Jazz Venues, which is out of New York City. And so he wanted to be, wanted me to be a part of that, even though we were 500 miles away. So I did. And we collaborated on putting different programs together and working, keeping musicians and building new audiences for the jazz form so that we would not lose the status of jazz in the United States as most people knew it then. And uh, it's still going and unfortunately now we, we lost Clem last week. And so uh, we'll see where it goes from there. And that's how I met Clem and that's how we became very close. Uh, and if you want to know what the word gentleman is, after you look it up in the dictionary, just meet Clem de Rosa. You'll know what the meaning of a gentleman is. And he was a gentleman. And I'm going to miss that guy. Woo! Unbelievable player. Unbelievable man. Cool. My pleasure to have met him and known him. Are there any incidents in performances, um, maybe with the big bands, that stand out to you? Yeah, um, I've, I've played, for instance, in some of the concert sets we've done. Here I am sitting next to me, Joe Temperley. Joe Temperley is probably the, one of the premier baritone saxophone players of the world who played with Duke Ellington for a long time, who now is a professor at Juilliard School of Music in a jazz department. And uh, that is... A super super player uh, that was un I didn't realize he was sitting next to me there for a time and I said well ladies and gentlemen 
Clem says, we're going to hear from Joe Temperley. What? Who's Joe? Te where's Joe? There he is. And he gets up and he, he's playing. And now stand by Alonzi. Oh, really? <laughs> but they treated me as an equal. And who else was sitting behind Joe Temperley on drums? Ed Shaughnessy from the Tonight Show band. And there's Ed. And uh, Rufus Reed, the famous, most famous jazz bassist of all times now of today and uh, there was Rufus Reed you know so I, I had an opportunity of course I can go on and on and on with the players in the band that I've worked with out in New York very super and just just a wonderful conglomeration of people that you really never knew or I never knew and I would ever know in my lifetime or even even being associated with those that's quite a compliment when you think about it. Yes. And it just happened because of Clem. And those are the things I say, wow, look at who I'm playing next to. Wow, man, whoa. One of Clem's greatest attributes appeared to be his willingness to bring people together, his ability to bring people together. You know, so many of the different performers, the composers, the arrangers, the... Um, everybody in the entire field of jazz seemed to know him, respect him, love him uh, from Br Brubeck on. Um, what was it about Clem that attracted everyone to him? When you meet Clem, he never forgets you, and he never forgets your name. Now, if we went to Florida to play, he would take a small contingent of us. Maybe he would take the lead alto player. Always took me because, you know, he had somebody to hang out with and things like that, and we talk about the performance afterwards. But if we'd go to Florida, he all of a sudden we have a full band. We, we went there with three people. Now we have 18 with a vocalist. How did that happen? Well, Clem knows everybody in that area. We go to Cleveland. We go there with four people, all of a sudden we've got 20 people. Ah, and you could do that any place in this country. Clem knew so many people. It was so well respected. And if we went to Hollywood or to Los Angeles uh, to do a concert, you're, you're working with some of the best people in the world. He, it, he would just bring them together. They wanted to be with him, near him, and work for him because he was, he was a Pied Piper of uh, uh, music. When we started Jazz Erie, you brought many, many phenomenal people to us uh, the for the advisory board. board, and Clem was one of those people. Yeah. What was his response when you asked him if he would lend his name, his credibility, maybe some of his ideas to us? I never even gave it a second, second. It's Clem, we need you, Jazz Erie. Never said, what's Jazz Erie? He said, "What you need what? I need you on an advisory situation. Put my name down, Stan, you got it. It's just that quick. And then if I need some more people, can we use you? Anything you want. That's just the way he, just the way he was. Hmm. And you know that because you've had connections with him too. Yeah, he was just a wonderful soul. Oh, what a, what, and, and as you said, as you said, a true gentleman. Really? Yes. And a lover of our God in heaven. Mm -hmm. So I know he's there. Oh, could not be anything other. Yeah, he's... Our good Lord's going to have a heck of a time trying to decide who's going to conduct his band. <laughs> there's so <laughs> many guys up there. I think he'll choose, I think he'll choose Clem. Yeah, beautiful. <laughs>